About two thirds of the people give up on them before January is even over. So why do we sabotage ourselves before we complete our goals? We are joined this morning by Joy Magnet Sherry Ali. Sherry, so good to see you this morning. Great to see you, Matt. Thanks for having me. Happy New Year. And happy New Year to you as well. All right, let's start with what self-sabotage is, because when you really dive into what it is, that's the opportunity to avoid it. Absolutely. So first I want to say that there's nothing wrong with you. Most people think like, oh my God, I sabotage myself, like I'm a bad person or I'm lazy. And it is not that at all. It simply goes back to our reptilian brains. Our brains love to find familiarity, routines, and patterns. So when you make a decision that you're going to do something outside of their comfort zone, it's comfort zone. It's like, eh, alarm, I'm not doing that. Take us through some of the, the tips you have, and, and you talk about a new way of thinking about self-sabotage. Right, so first you want to see self-sabotage not as your enemy, but as it's just trying to protect and preserve you, right? So if you've been disappointed in the past, you failed, all it's trying to do is keep you from failing again. So we want to befriend it. We want to understand and make it feel safe. And there are great ways to be able to make it feel safe. And one of those is just by retraining your brain, giving it little small daily habits every day that show your brain, hey, we're safe in this new routine. So whether it's waking up five minutes earlier, whether it's taking a different route to work, just show your brain that it's okay when you push it outside its normalcy. Hey, you also say to attach your why and don't do this alone. Yes, uh, so often our why, the reason why we want to do things, sometimes it's superficial, like, oh, I want to fit into that size, smaller jeans. Not that that's bad, but why? What does it make you feel? Maybe it'll make you feel more powerful, more confident. Uh, maybe losing weight is going to help you live longer. So you really want to attach your emotional why to it and not so much irrational. It'll help you stick with it. Yeah, other tips include visualize the entire process. And I love this one because I think this is a mistake a lot of us make. Be specific. If you set a vague goal without any real clarity to it, you're probably not going to achieve it. Absolutely. It's easy to say, like, I want to be fit this year. Well, what does that look like? Maybe it looks like exercising with your mom, walking around the lake Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Maybe it looks like changing your food habits. I'm going to cut out breads on Monday. So being very clear on what it is that you want is going to give you a greater success rate. Uh, you also say skip the all or nothing attitude, which I think uh, is easy for us to do. Like if we run into one small failure along the way to our goal, we just kind of throw our hands up and say, well, we tried. Exactly. And so just remember that this is an everyday thing. So it's not everything is over and that's it. I quit. It's about showing up and giving yourself credit every time you follow through. And if that one day you don't do it, try again the next day. You keep going. Uh, Sherry, I do want to ask you, you've got a program coming up. It is called Spark of Hope. Tell us about that program and how people can get in touch with you about it. Absolutely. So we're going to work six weeks on your goals. We're going to work making your visions clear, but most importantly, what gets in the way, what stops you every single time. So those inner saboteurs, we're going to address those and we are going to overcome them and they can find me directly on my website, SherryElise.com. Uh, they can also go to Spark of Hope and uh, they can find me there. Yeah. And I know you're on social media as well. I follow you on Instagram. Sherry, always good to see you. Happy New Year to you. Thank you so much. Great to be here.